That is the hobo spider on my bare arm. I think it's time to find out what the bite of a hobo spider can really do. All right, one, two, three. Oh, there it is, there it is, it's in, it's in, it's in. The American Northwest is home to breathtaking landscapes and beautiful scenery, but it has a dark secret. Below the whispering pines, under the rocks that tumble down the scenic slopes, are sheets of webs with funnels that disappear into the darkness underground. These are the home of the hobo spider. One of the fastest spiders on the planet, these spiders are at the heart of one of the most insidious biological mysteries in American history. Throughout the Northwest, people report horrific necrotic wounds where their skin seems to die off. These sores greatly resemble bad brown recluse bites. The problem? The brown recluse isn't found in this region. Our prime suspect is the hobo spider. Found commonly in homes where these suspected bites occur, even some medical sites still list it as one of the most dangerous spiders in the country. But what's the truth about this spider? I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm gonna get to the bottom of this mystery once and for all by taking a bite from the hobo spider. In my search for the natural world's deadliest secrets, I have been studying the Ooh, bites yeah. of spiders here in the US, <sighs> ranking them in a tier list to find out their effects on the human body. So far, the worst of them is exactly who you'd expect, the widow spiders. But many Northwesterners swear the hobo spider is the most dangerous spider bite you could possibly receive. While exploring a mountain trail, I found a nice sized hobo spider under a fallen log. So I think you know what time it is. Time to find out exactly where the hobo spider ranks among North American spider bites. Now that right there might be one of the most feared spiders in North America. What I have here is the hobo spider and a pretty decent sized male at that. These are the ones people find in their house and are so deathly afraid of. Now, as the title of this video suggests, I will be finding out firsthand what the bite of this spider is actually like. But before I do that, because it is a scary looking spider, and I am gonna take a bite test. I think it's important that I, I give this little guy a chance to clear his name before I show you what this spider's capable of. You know, I understand that bite videos like this, they can sometimes give people the wrong idea about these incredible little animals. And as you can see right here already, this is a wild, a wild hobo spider. We caught this just a few minutes ago, hiking this trail. And look at that, he's chilling there, right on my arm, not a single ounce of aggression in him. One of the biggest things about the hobo spider's story, about it being dangerous, is they think that it'll bite you in your sleep. People wake up with these necrotic wounds and they blame them on spiders. But I have put this spider on me and he wants nothing more than to jump off and run away into the brush, let alone bite. So I'm not so sure that they would bite you in your sleep. And I've even read from reports of like colleagues of mine that even getting them to bite intentionally can be quite difficult. So we'll, we'll see in a second how true that is. But just in case you were wondering, this is not an aggressive spider, but to fully see just what this spider is capable of and how dangerous it really is, I think, I think it's time to find out what the bite of a hobo spider can really do. All right, so I'm getting my shot set up real quick. So I'm not sure how cooperative this spider is gonna be. I've been told that it's very difficult to get them to bite, so. Spider's in position. So what I'm about to do is I'm gonna take a bite from the hobo spider. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> he ran right on three. The spider really doesn't wanna bite me. And the problem is he's so small and so fast that actually pinning him to get him to bite is proving to be nearly impossible without hurting him. Dang it. I need to like, I haven't had a successful pin at all yet. Let me see if I can actually do that. Even with successful pins, the male hobo spider wouldn't bite me at all. Not even the slightest hint of a fang. And it's interesting because these males are the ones that will turn up in your house when they're actually leaving their webs to go search for mates. So if this one won't even bite me on purpose when I'm pinning it to my skin, I have a hard time believing that they'll bite you on accident in your sleep. As it stands right now, I am already fairly confident that I can confirm that this epidemic of necrotic bites 
probably wasn't caused by hobo spiders, but I want to be sure. Down the trail a ways, I actually found a female hobo spider as well, so I figured I'd test her out to see if she was any more likely to bite. Oh, there's a fang. There's a fang. Oh, there it is. There's, it's in, it's in, it's in. Honestly. Oh, it's itching now. I don't, it doesn't feel like a ton, but that, that went in, that went in. You can see right there, that's where it went in. Just a little bit inflamed. Oh, it's really itching now. There's a little bit of a rash forming and it feels very similar to like a poison ivy rash or like the itchiness when your skin gets dry after it was sunburnt. It looks like I actually got two. There's one section here, you can see two little pin pricks where the fangs went in. And then one here, that first time that I saw a fang, it looks like it did actually go in. Two little bites from the hobo spider. All in all, not a very, very serious reaction yet, but uh, we're gonna keep an eye on it for about a week and see how it progresses. With that, I embarked on my journey into the unknown. Like the brown recluse spider, if you're gonna have a necrotic reaction from the hobo spider, it wouldn't happen immediately. I kept careful watch on the bite site to see what would develop. The initial bite wasn't bad, but could the hobo spider be packing a nasty, slow-acting venom? Only time would tell. So you're probably thinking, Spencer, this doesn't feel like the greatest idea. This is a potentially dangerous spider, and you're just sitting around waiting to see if something happens. And I see where you're coming from, but I actually want to talk about why I wanted to do this experiment in the first place. See, the hobo spider is a member of the funnel weaver family not to be confused with the deadly funnel web spiders from Australia. None of the funnel weavers are known to be medically significant, and the hobo spider is actually not native to the US. In its native range in Europe, it's not thought to be dangerous either. There's a great saying in biology, correlation does not imply causation. Just because these necrotic bites were appearing in the hobo spider's introduced range in North America does not mean they were causing them. And it turns out we've actually sequenced their venom. We actually haven't been able to find any compounds in the venom of the hobo spider that would suggest they're capable of necrotic bites. We're still hiking, but we're at 30 minutes. You can see, it's a little bit of mottled inflammation there, but uh, the itching is actually gone. So there's no pain, no itching. I don't know, hobo spider might not be uh, all it's cracked up to be. By the one hour mark, all symptoms were gone. Not even the faintest itch. Over the next couple days, I watched the site and saw no change. It's hot out here. I'm actually out here hiking in Florida right now. Um, but it's been a week since I was bitten by the hobo spider and still absolutely nothing. Not even a mark, not even a hint of necrosis, I think if I was gonna see any effects, I would have seen something by now. That spider envenomated me. There was a full envenomation. I could feel the itchy effects of the venom after the bite. And even a week later, there are no, no long-term side effects. There's no extended damage or anything by the spider. I think that coupled with the extensive research we have done, um, I don't know. I just think it's the final nail in the coffin of the hobo spider myth. And that's really all it is, a myth. While different individuals may react differently to the venom of any bite or sting, the bottom line is that the hobo spider doesn't have any compounds in its venom that would cause necrosis in humans. And that's if they even bite you in the first place. Coming into this experiment, I expected more from the spider, honestly. I was pretty sure it wasn't gonna rank up with the actually dangerous species, but I thought it would be at least closer to the wolf spiders of B tier. But with how underwhelming the hobo spider bite actually was, I can't get Give it any higher than the absolute bottom of C tier. Noticeable at first, but ultimately an inconsequential bite. As I released the spider back into its mountainside, I could rest assured, at least knowing that its name was finally cleared, and hopefully less of their lookalikes will be killed on sight out of fear. The world of spiders is full of mysteries, just like this one especially these odd mountain dwellers. Further south, in the arid mountains of Arizona, lurks another secretive spider, one that lurks in funnel webs of its own and looks suspiciously like the actually lethal funnel web spiders of Australia. If you wanna learn more about the mysterious curtain web spider, 
check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.